So today we're going to be making a passerelle bridge. Passerelle bridge was invented by Khaki King and her luthier Rachel Rosencrantz. Khaki King has always been an innovative free thinker who has pushed boundaries on her instrument. And when they first came out with this several years ago, I thought it was the coolest thing I'd ever seen because it really does transform your acoustic guitar into another instrument. But now that we have the 3D printer, I thought, well, this is an excellent excuse to use a 3D printer and design a passerelle bridge. So let's get started. Let's go through the design phase. Let's find a guitar and then let's play the thing. So this is the original passerelle bridge that was designed by Khaki King and her luthier. And it's made out of cast bronze. And all I had to go off the dimensions were photographs like this. And this is the photo that I was going off of. I could actually see this in context to the actual guitar. Also, keep in note, look at that low E string. It's hanging way off the fretboard. So the string spacing is much wider. And you want that to accommodate for all the finger picking that you're gonna be doing. So the way I started this is I started with the outer shell. And that's what you're seeing here. I have the outer shell. And then what I did was I designed the inner shell, which is the hollow section of it. So then I added my string placement where I wanted those strings to land on the bridge itself in relation to where that guitar fretboard is. So now that I know where those strings are, I can put my actual holes. And so these are all individually sized holes for the string to actually sit in. So obviously the low E is thicker. So this particular hole is gonna have a larger diameter to accommodate the string gauge and each hole is different. And I think I landed on 1.65 mil, but I think I'm gonna push that again to probably 1.75 or 1.85 because I am having it kind of pop out every once in a while. So this needs to be bigger. So then the last thing to do is add the text. So I just added a really cool passerelle text onto the lower left side. And then all we have to do is basically extrude it. And here it is. So obviously once it's extruded, we can start to do all sorts of things. Like we can make our string slots and you can see the low E is much, much bigger than the A string and the D string. And that's just by design. There is the fret slot down here at the bottom too. So the fret, we can actually seat in there and it is deep and wide enough to accommodate for all thicknesses of fret wire. And there's also a slight radius on the bottom. And then it's simply a matter of kind of like chamfering all the edges and building the supports. And that's it. We're ready to basically print this. And this was my first iteration or my first design. And you can see it's got the basic hollow intersection there. Of course, the issue is all the tension is coming down on the bridge via the strings here. And so right now, if I squeezed it, I actually can move this bridge. So this was a, definitely a poor design. I just didn't think that it needed supports. In my second iteration, I actually did design the supports. So this does have one, two, three supports, one at the center and two flanking the center, and it is extremely rigid. There's absolutely no way that this bridge will ever get crushed by the tension of the strings. It is very, very hard. So since you place this on your fretboard on the 16th fret, it's essentially creating a perfect fifth on both sides of the bridge. Now when I say perfect, it's a little off. The intonation is a little tricky. Some of the inconsistencies in the intonation is actually part of the charm of the instrument. And then obviously we have the spacing. So this was my second iteration and I designed the spacing fairly wide to accommodate for kind of a wider grip. This is 80 millimeters. My third iteration, 
I reduced that down to 70, which is the one I'm using now. And so now that we have this done and we've printed a couple and we've iterated through the design a little bit, now what we need is a donor guitar. Now Khaki King says in a lot of her videos that you're gonna to wanna to be careful because their cast bronze version could scar and mar up the fretboard. This is actually made out of PLA, so it shouldn't mar anything up, but still, we need a donor guitar, a guitar that we don't care about, a guitar that we can actually do whatever we want with to really kind of explore and push boundaries. Let's get to it. So this project we're working on needs an acoustic guitar. So what I did was I picked up a broken acoustic on eBay. And this one's got a broken headstock. So what we're gonna do is quickly fix it and then use it in our project. So it does have a cracked neck. I can see it here, it's pretty gaping. It's a really kind of clean break and it's gaping enough so that we can squirt some glue in there and then bind it with some surgical tubing. This is the third iteration of my design. And what I've done differently here is reduce the spacing. So this spacing from E to E is 70 millimeters. And the other thing I did was actually chamfer the top edges. So there's a roll off on both edges, as opposed to my original design, which was flat. And so I do believe that because it was flat, I was getting probably a worse intonation because it was intonating at the edge. And this one's intonating more at the center. So right now, I don't have any specific tuning. I just kind of tuned it up to tension and we have essentially the left side and we have the right side. Now the cool thing is the left side is clearly quieter than the right. The right side is over the sound box and the left isn't. But again, that's part of the charm that you're getting these really interesting sound level dynamics. So the other reason why I like these instruments is because you have to approach them differently. We're so used to our right hand taking care of the plucking, but now we have this left hand that's no longer fretting, and so it has to sort of learn to sort of pluck as well. And so having that sort of <laughs> really odd, unfamiliar sort of technique is going to make you write differently and you're going to be composing differently. So you might be thinking that having only 12 notes is going to be limiting in some way. And that's true. That's really the whole point. The whole point is those type of limitations are going to bring out innovations in your composition. So for example, you can have all these triads on one side. You can also have triads on the left side. And then you can mix and match the right and the left. So you can obviously play both sides at the same time, as I was demonstrating earlier. But you can also play all 12 notes at the same time to make really gigantic chords. Sometimes you can get that really cool like pedal steel B bender sound. And so the possibilities are really endless.
pretty crazy that you can get so creative with just a piece of plastic. And you can convert any acoustic into a new, unique instrument. When I was designing this, I couldn't find any dimensions online. I had to go off photographs. So what I'm doing is I'm putting these dimensions as PDFs on my store for free for the next week. I'm also going to be making available the 3D model. So if you want to 3D print your own, you can. But remember, with just the PDF and the dimensions, you can make this out of wood, acrylic, aluminum, brass, whatever you want. Get them down below. Thanks for watching. Take it easy.